Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Stationeers. So let's get going. I have a rather large project planned for today, and I'm probably not going to have any time to spare. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is a proper gas capture furnace. It sounds simple, but there's actually an incredible amount of moving parts, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do, this is first off temporary. This is uh, not a permanent uh, structure that I'm going to leave up. Uh, I just wanted to make that excruciatingly clear. Eventually, I will have a proper one in the basement of my base, but for now, this one will have to do. The reason I'm doing a gas capture um, system here is sort of twofold. Um, the first one is that I need more Invar, Constantin, Electrum, and uh, uh, solder. Uh, and then the second one, of course, is that uh, the gases that outgas from said chemistry uh, could be very, very useful to my base. So those are the reasons why I'm doing this gas capture. Uh, the reason why it sounds simple, it sounds simple, right? Like, you could just grab gas, just like I did here. Um, in fact, I'm going to turn these off. Grab gas, just like I did here, to feed into your... Um, you know, your whatever, your filters, or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but to do it properly... Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong printer. To do it properly is actually a bit more difficult. Um, and the reason why is because... Um, I want it to be able to be used day and night. That is the kicker. Uh, and that gets a little bit more complicated for anyone that has done a gas capture furnace. Uh, the reason why that's a little bit more difficult is because, um, well, to put it simply, your furnace creates atmosphere when it's smelting, and that atmosphere will heat up anything you're currently holding, uh, and then the net result of that, of course, is if you're trying to melt ices or whatever, uh, what will end up happening is your ices or whatever, volatiles, etc., etc., will start melting in your hands. Right? And obviously, obviously we don't want that. That is definitely not how to make a proper furnace. So, uh, the solution here is to isolate your inputs from uh, the furnace itself. So, I'm going to need to make another furnace. Uh, and actually, you don't make a furnace here, do you? You make a furnace on the auto lathe or the fabricator. So, let's go and do that. And that's what gets a little bit complicated because... The furnace, at a glance, when you're staring at it, tells you a lot of information. It tells you the temperature, the pressure, um, what percentage of the reagents have processed, um, what you're going to be making. Uh, there is a lot of data involved uh, at just first glance of staring at your furnace. And here's the sucky part. Um, we're going to basically have to take all the data that the furnace freely gives you and read that out digitally. Um, that is probably the safest, easiest way. Uh, and that means it's going to be somewhat of a complicated uh, structure that we're about to do. I love how that collapses so nicely. Um, so what we're doing here is we are going to be setting up a furnace that can hold and store gas... Uh, from both the furnace outgassing and the room that it's in and not uh, pollute anything with hot gases. Uh, those That's our sort of mission statement for this project here. Um, so right now I'm waiting on the furnace to be manufactured. I think I kind of wish I didn't put all my copper in there because at the moment I probably need some more cabling. Uh, what I'm going to do in the meantime is to tidy up my inventory while I'm waiting on this furnace. Now, there's a lot of different ways to have a gas capture furnace, and I'm not saying my way is the best way or even an ideal way, but it is a quick, dirty, temporary way. So if you're trying to set your base up, um, this is going to be a very useful tool. A perfect way to do it would be, of course, to be controlling your furnace with um, gas inputs and logic and basically like a hands-off, I don't need to do anything, but set, go, uh, that would be sort of the most ideal way to do a, uh, 
uh, a furnace and I will be having one of those beautiful fully automated furnaces in the future uh, in the basement of my little home here uh, but that's not this project this project is just to fill uh, my pockets with the rarer resources here and then also to show you how to do just the basic gas capture furnace alright so there's my furnace I'm gonna want a door as well that comes a little bit quicker and maybe some stairs and we'll see this this project is uh, like I said it sounds simple but it's rather complex um, when it's fully set up uh, which is you know I guess unfortunate all right so first things first um, the furnace in no way needs to be upright uh, in fact there's a good reason for it not to be and then we're gonna want a door here it doesn't really matter which way it faces but that's fine uh, let's go ahead and print up some steel or iron oh, we got some extra gold so iron sheets so that we can actually make the furnace I believe we still have two iron sheets floating around somewhere so I'm gonna make two of these because oh and I have some steel sheets here as well we'll combine that with that stack do I have iron sheets? yep there it is two iron sheets so of course the first thing to making an automated furnace you actually have to make a furnace and then you could eventually automate it um, okay so what I'm gonna do here is grab my um, kit walls and as you can see in the back here actually the furnace is probably too far back let me uh let me just move this up a bit you want it so that the pipes the pipes actually don't even need to stick all the way back out uh, in fact it's it's probably better if they don't uh, all right so let's go reconstruct this okay and we'll grab our walls and we want to wall this thing in right because it's going to be producing when you smelt it's going to be producing uh, toxins or gases that uh, you want to be able to capture and not pollute um, and then on top of being able to capture it it's also important to get that stuff so that you can use it too it's not just about not polluting uh, your base or whatever um, it's about repurposing the gases that outgas out of your furnace so when you're doing smelting inside the furnace there's a certain set of gases that are produced usually from whatever um, whatever material you're making so for instance silicon makes some uh, a fair bit of nitrogen uh, when you process it and oxygen and water and stuff like that um, every different metal every different compound they all produce a slightly different profile of materials uh, and it's important to know that if you want to be able to have a, a nice amount of gases for your base uh, you're going to have to capture those gases uh, I'm gonna fix this ceiling here a little bit because it's uh, facing inwards is totally fine I just want it to uh, composite wall okay yeah, there we go face inwards it can look nice in the inside so there is our beautiful sad furnace uh, <laughs> Just laying on its side there. Okay. Let's put that away. Next up, we're going to want pipes and chutes. So I'm going to set up the chutes first. So kit chute is pretty straightforward. Uh, I haven't really used them yet, so uh, this is a very good way to demonstrate using them. This allows you to move non... This allows you to move like objects, like ores and whatnot. Uh, around a system uh, sort of the way pipes and wires pipes do gases and liquids and, and wires do uh, uh, electricity shoots uh, work in very much the same way they just move material 
Uh, they can move oxite and things like that, or they could move, um, you know, literal items man that are manufactured. Um, so they they can be pretty handy like that. And what I'm doing is setting up this uh, furnace here to be shoot fed. Uh, the reason is I don't want to be standing in the same room as the furnace when we are uh, using it. Uh, and if you're wondering why not, it's because when you're using a furnace, the furnace will produce uh, a lot of it will it will constantly be outgassing um, material, right? So. If I'm standing in the same room as the furnace, uh, what will end up happening is the gases that are the the stuff in my hand that I want to melt to produce atmosphere uh, is going to be constantly melting, which is really not what I would want to have happen. I think is the the easiest way to explain my not wanting to use, uh, not wanting to be in the same room. So, what I'm doing is setting up an inlet and outlet here for material to go into the furnace without me actually standing in the furnace room itself. And I'm gonna need, like, three more shoots to do it. Um, there is a different, a few different types of shoots. You can use bins. Bins have a little, um, much like the fold handle. Uh, bins have the ability to insert things and then pull the handle and it will automatic it, then it will go um, but they need to be powered whereas inlets and outlets just sort of do it automatically they don't require uh, input in that way all right so I will show you how the shoot system works um, maybe not with my wrench <laughs> and we'll just send uh, some iron through the shoot system here because this is the first time I'm demoing shoots. So, you drop something in there, it goes into the furnace, open the mold, and it comes out of the outlet. And that's the whole system. It's really, really straightforward. Uh, what I might end up doing is actually lowering these shoots a little bit so that I can, um, that it doesn't take up so much room. I think that's not a terrible idea. So let's go ahead and crank out a few more shoots just so that I can um, not fill the room with shoots, uh, because this room is going to be filled with, like, buttons and readouts and stuff like that. Unfortunately, automated, uh, fully, or not automated, not fully automating, but even semi-automating the, um, the furnace here gets a little involved very, very quickly. Now, fortunately about the chutes, the chutes don't really care if they intersect things so, by that I mean, um, the shoots don't care if they're, like, embedded in stuff. So, I can, I can easily just embed it, uh, let me turn that around a little bit. I can easily embed it in the floor, and it's, it will still work just fine. Uh, so we want the inlet to face up. to then feed oh that's the output okay I read that wrong let's put the corner there first corner straight inlet alright so now it's, it's closer to the floor so it's not going to uh take up so much room. And of course you can have windows and all sorts of things here. This is just the very basic amount of shooting. Alright, so now, uh, as you can see, it, it, it doesn't fill the room. I, I can it operate this at eye level. Alright, the next thing we need to do is some of the plumbing. Uh, this is a little bit more complex than the shoot system, and it's because... There's a lot of different things we want to do with the plumbing here. So let's get the pipe bending unit stocked with materials. I'm probably not going to need the silicon though. All 
right? And just to save a little bit of power, we can shut these extra things off because our kit battery is a little low because it was charging up the uh, bat charger there. All right, so the first things I want is a tank and tank connector. And this will allow us to store all the gases that we capture. So that was a tank connector. I'm just gonna, oh, that didn't go very far. And then we want a portable tank. That takes a little bit longer to make. I did have a spare active vent that I'm gonna use and grab. And I'm also gonna want another steel frame. See if I have one spare. Now it looks like that's something I'm also going to need to manufacture. Okay, there's my portable tank. Throw it on over there. Let me get a little bit of my steel. Oh, perfect. The first thing out was steel. Get a little bit of my steel back. Make some frames. I just, I believe, need one. Alright. And while I go over, get these steel sheets. Uh, there was some spare pipes inside this base here. I'm going to go grab them real quick. I'm going to need more pipes than this for sure. But we'll start to use what we already have manufactured. So, uh, the furnace. This, um, let's go ahead and temporarily remove the walls now that we have them all set up. I don't need to have the walls impede your ability to see what I'm working on. All right, so I don't need to bother with input. Input's gonna be handled with the chutes. Output is what I care about. So the furnace's output gas here is um, what I'm most concerned about. This output gas eventually will be um, flushed, right? Every now and then we're gonna wanna flush the furnace. Uh, so what's really important here is that we don't have a lot of plumbing before a volume pump. So let's go make said volume pump now. And I'm gonna actually want two volume pumps. I know that already. So let's get both of those crafted up. And while I'm here, start making the generic pipes. Okay. So one of these volume pumps is going to go basically as close to the furnace as possible. And it can clip. In fact, it could uh, face outwards, that's fine. And that way, um, there's not a lot of gas that's leaving the furnace into a plumbing system. It's pretty much immediate. The uh, downside to this is that's not exactly the perfect spot for a pl uh, pump, but that's fine. So this uh, volume pump will then pump gas. It will pull gas out of the furnace and into this piping network here. And before I make a Armageddon amount of pipes, let's stop that. I can use some, but I don't need I don't need an, a massive collection of pipes here. So what ends up happening is when we want to vent out our um, our furnace, uh, we have a volume pump that can activate to vent it out, right? And then uh, we need to put that gas somewhere. We don't want to immediately introduce that gas to our filtration system because that gas is probably superheated. Uh, that's generally what a furnace does. So that means that the gas that we pull out of the furnace uh, needs to go to a holding tank. And the holding tank needs a way to cool down that gas so that it is not superheated. So what I'm doing here is building a temporary holding tank for the gas so that we can store it uh, sort of safely and comfortably until it hits a temperature that we deem 
safe for filtration. And I can eventually do all of this uh, automatically with logic and all that, but this is going to be very much manual. So this volume pump here uh, pulls gas from the furnace and puts it into this tank here. Pretty simple. This act event will do very much the same thing. This act event will pull gas from the room that the furnace is in and put that into the holding tank as well, actually bypassing entirely the volume pump. Uh, the reason being, when your furnace is on, it is constantly creating waste gas in the room that it's in, um, which means that when you're trying to smelt things, you don't actually want to be standing in the same room as your furnace, because what will end up happening is it will constantly be putting out gases, sometimes toxic or often toxic gases, into the room that you're in, and uh, unless you're constantly filtering it or whatever, uh, those toxins build up, and that's not good for you. Um, that will that will actually could kill you if you're not wearing a suit. So bad times is I guess what I'm trying to say. So you don't want to be in the same room. And then uh, we will have a, another volume pump uh, pulling the gases from the tank here and putting them into our general atmospheric filtration unit. Let me turn off that. That heater's not drawing power, but it just looks bad with it on. I'm gonna turn that off real quick. All right, so that's the basic plumbing. Uh, more is gonna need to be added, but that's uh, like I said, the basic plumbing of the furnace. And of course, the input we're not bothering to deal with yet. Uh, not on this furnace, at least. Future furnaces, maybe, but not not, not this one. Uh, so the other problem is the gases of this furnace here are going to be really, really, really hot. So not only are we going to need to store the gases, but we're going to need to cool the gases. And... Um, one of the ways to do this is radiators. Mars happens to be cold, cold enough to cool down the gases in our furnace to a safe filterable um, level. So the next thing I'm gonna make here is I need some more pipes and then I'm gonna have a large radiator system to be able to uh, use the radiators to, uh, to cool down the temperature of the gases that are inside the the uh, network here. And all that really matters here is that the radiators, uh, what, what they do is they basically equalize the temperature of the atmosphere around the radiator with the contents inside the pipe that they're attached to. That's sort of what a radiator does. Um, I grew up in an old home with water radiators, so what ended up happening was we would have the house's hot water, the boiler, uh, pump heat, super heat water, and then pump that water around the house, um, causing heat to radiate out of the radiator units, and... Um, and then that water would be then returned back to be rewarmed, uh, essentially having a, a network of very hot pipes around the house to warm the house. Strange, but yeah, that's how a lot of old homes worked. And it's the really pretty much the same um, technology of these old school radiators. Uh, so I'm, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be installing these radiators to this pipe here so that uh, this pipe can lose temperature uh, when it is has contents in it. Is it cool? No. But does it work? Yes. And that is another step we'll have to do. And the more radiators I add, the more quickly the um, the temperature normalizes between inside the pipe and Martian Atmo. Uh, so if you just had one radiator, it would take l much longer than two, much longer, you know, so and so forth. I don't think I have to explain that to you guys, hopefully. So I need one, two, three, four, five, maybe five more, something like that. Doesn't need to be perfect. 
just functional. And the reason for this is, um, we really wouldn't want, like, a thousand degree, a thousand degrees Celsius or even Fahrenheit, the unit of measurement, once you get into really high numbers, it doesn't matter, a degree oxygen or nitrogen to be reentered or to be introduced into our filtration because then when we try to breathe it uh our lungs will set on fire in fact the whole base might set on fire all right there we go so we have this unnecessarily complex system of radiators to cool down the gas that is inside this tank so this tank when these valve pumps are off it's just um the plumbing network between the vent here and the tank and then everything there so there's a lot of surface area to irradiate heat, in other words. All right. So now we have the ability to put things into the, the furnace and then um, the ability to take things out of the furnace. We don't have the ability to remotely control the mold, nor do we have the ability to know the reagents or temperatures or stuff like that. Um, that is going to be the next step. So this step is pretty much done. Um, at this point... I'm going to probably crank out some additional uh, cabling. I'm going to want a lot of cables for this, so let's grab my bar of copper here. Grab some cables. So in order to pretty much remotely control the radiator, or the, uh, the furnace rather, um, I will need to read the temperature and pressure, obviously, because all of the recipes involve a very tight tolerance temperature and pressure. Um, I'm going to want to be able to flush um, the furnace, at least the furnace, into the holding tank remotely, so I don't have to leave the room. Uh, and then there's a few other things that I'm going to want to be able to do, like... Um, Remotely control the mold of the furnace and remotely re excuse me, uh, read the reagent process uh, remotely as well. Uh, so with that said, let's first plug these bad boys in. We're going to plug them into the atmospheric system because they're sort of atmospherics. Uh, the reason I say that is the purpose of capturing these gases and not just having some sort of furnace is so that we can generate, um, we can capture the gas that the furnace generates and use it in our base how we see fit. Uh, one of the one of the big reasons I'm doing this is I'm not I don't have enough coolant to properly run AC in my base. I could decide that my coolant could be CO2 or something like that, um, but I'd rather have my coolant be the best possible coolant. That you can have, which is uh, pollutant, if my uh, memory if memory serves correctly. So that is why I'm hooking this all up, so I can start capturing really all the gases that my smelting process um, produces, but coolant chief amongst them. All right, because I don't want to hook up to the giant atmospherics uh, network. Um, there's a few different things I could do. I think what I'm going to do is just have a little APC. So, have a, a power controller, um, to separate out my temporary little network here from everything else. Uh, which takes a little bit of solder. And I'm totally okay with that. Small price to pay. Alright. So what I'm going to do here is put a power controller between everything, uh, just to separate it out. So let's undo some of the cabling I've done. Ta-da! And this is output. That's one of the, uh, the powers of a power controller. Um, it keeps networks separated. So even if it doesn't have a battery, it just acts as like a, a filter, a data filter. Data don't, data does not pass through power controllers. 
So if I open this bad boy up, I can power it on, which means I'll be able to turn this vent on and uh, turn the volume pumps on, all that stuff. Um, you know, if I wanted to, I don't at the moment. All right, so next up, we want some, I'm gonna want some more frames that I'm gonna place temporarily because I need to place things on the walls. So let's get two more steel frames. My steel is over here. And this will be for, for data. So I'm just going to slap these down. And of course, these are temporary. I just want the ability to put buttons and things uh, on the walls. Okay. Another thing I'm going to want to do is to be able to read reagents and pressures and temperatures. So, um, now that we have sun up, I'm going to start charging my nuclear batteries again. Turn all these off for a moment. So let's take a look. The furnace conveniently has a data port which contains all of the information you need to be able to know what the furnace is doing remotely. I just need to tap into that uh, data port and be able to read it. So there it goes. Now it's tapped in to the same network. And then what we're going to need is a reader um, or a writer even to be able to write information to consoles. So next up, Let's go ahead and write, create some consoles, some kit consoles. So uh, let's move the gold in. And these kit consoles are going to display temperature and pressure information so that I know uh, what's going on in my little furnace. Uh, because without this, I will have no concept. I'll have no idea of what's actually going on in there. So these could be monitors, or they could be LEDs. Um, I think what I will do is have them be LEDs, because I've been mostly reading information through LEDs, but that does mean that I have to make a little bit of changes to my, my little uh, box here. So let me fix the box. Uh, why? Because I have to put a frame inside, um, and all of these walls are on the inside, not outside. Not that big of a deal. So, uh, what I could do, actually, what could be cool is, instead of walls, have windows. So I can see into the contraption. Um, you know, the, the, why not? It only cost me a little bit of glass to do it that, that way. Uh, so let's put sheets up. And as long as the pressure inside the furnace room doesn't reach, like, glass shattering points, uh, it doesn't pose any sort of problem. Uh, Glass windows obviously have a much lower tolerance than, um, like, steel frames. Steel frames are, can hold more pressure and temperature uh, than most other things. And everything has its own pressure and temperature setting. So pipes and steel frames and doors. So blast doors, for instance, which are in the entrance of my, um, my base here, can hold a lot more pressure than, like, a glass door, for instance, which can hold a lot less. Uh, I don't plan on super pressurizing anything, so <laughs> I shouldn't have that issue. But uh, in the case that I did have some sort of unfortunate super pressur pressurization, um, you know, these windows here will be quick to explode. Oops, I just put um, a wall into the uh, into the mold there. 
Okay. So here's my little window. This allows me to put a steel frame on the inside. And with that steel frame, I'll be able to put up LEDs and buttons and stuff. Alright, so let's go ahead and weld that. Now my furnace is in a <laughs> inside of a frame. Don't worry, it, it doesn't mind. Uh, and then I have consoles. So these consoles, I'm gonna want probably three. I I think. Um, I'm gonna want an LED display for temperature and pressure, and also an LED display for reagent processes. So let me get one more of these little consoles printed. So the reagent processes is um, how many of the reagents have finished to know when to open the mold. Um, because of course, normally on a furnace you can tell what percentage of your materials have gone through the process. Um, you know what, actually, I think what I'm going to do is just good old fashioned consoles here because I can put uh, the proper monitors in them and I'll, it will use a lot less logic. Uh, so I'll do that right now. Let's head on over to the electric. And what this will be is, uh, let's see. Boards for gas display. And I want two of them, and then I want my little data disk. And I'm going to want some glass as well. I'm not going to be able to finish this project this episode, but I want to make some measurable headway. It is somewhat of a complicated project that I've been putting off because of its complexity. Um, knowing that I didn't really need to capture my gases quite yet, but now I'm getting much, much closer to the point where I need to actually generate some novel gases, and it would help to have these all wired up and all that. Alright, so these consoles now have gas displays in them. Um, next up, I'm going to need to wire them in. So let's wire them all up together. I really don't care how ugly the wiring is. I'm not going for beautiful engineering of the year, just function. Thanks for the warning. A little suit. Alright, so we want a cable going out like that oops come on did I really put it like that I guess I did all right cable straight and run the cable down Ooh, just enough cables here one to spare all right then let's go grab the data disk and insert the data disk, which allows us to set it up. And this can be furnace pressure. As you can see, it's very easy to display it this way. I don't need logic. And this will be furnace temperature. So now I can very, very quickly and easily read furnace temperature and pressure, no problems. Uh, I can even label these. And this will allow me to, to be able to tell at a quick glance uh, what my temperatures and pressures are of the furnace so that I can know, um, you know, do I need a higher temperature or pressure for whatever I'm trying to make. All right, now that I've 
made that, I can um, go ahead and remove the... Uh, in fact, I can remove the whole frame. I don't really need the frame anymore. That will float there. Alright, well guys, uh, that's about all the time I have for this episode. So I'm going to have to pick up the automated furnace. Or not automated, but the, um, the gas capture furnace build for next episode. If you have any questions for me so far about this, just drop me a line, and I do hope that you tune in next time. Thank you all very much for watching and supporting this series. There's quite a lot of wonderful chatter on the Discord about this. If you'd like to contribute, get into the Discord. It's just rodamot.com. Click the Discord link. If you're not sure what Discord is, it is a chat forum, a real-time chat forum, and I am almost always online. So if you have a question for me that you want answered in real time, or just to discuss things, Discord is the place to be. Thank you all. Catch you all later. Adios.